April 12, 2012, Nevada City, California. The entire world was spinning out of control. A year and a half had gone by since I died twice on an operating table in Mexico. One entire winter, spring, summer, and fall. And now another winter gone. To most people, that doesn't seem long, but to me, it has been close to an eternity. Something to be endured, not a second chance, but one big question mark, why? Oh, well, I suppose I'll never know the answer. I'll just continue a lost journey to God only knows where. A wandering soul full of unrest a walking miracle, a man whom in his own mind has made contact with the other side and was prayed back into a life of questioning unrest by loved ones who will never understand a person who long ago accepted his destination. But here I am again, guitar in hand, a town full of strangers that all seem familiar hoping for a new night of magic and music on the western slope of the Donner Pass. Lord, Lord, Lord. When I ran through the far end of that tunnel and realized I had just gone from age 63 to age 8 in the time it takes to blink an eye and felt my grandfather's hand on my arm and looked up into a set of eyes I had not seen since age 12, I was full of wonderment. He pulled me close and hugged the life from me and in a voice as clear as God said, You came here for a reason. That reason has been accomplished and now you need to leave Mexico and go home. I did not want to go. I wanted to stay, but my job here was not finished. I ran back through that tunnel and I awoke from a world I needed to learn more of. I suppose all of that will stay on hold until I'm finished here. Troubadour Camp, April 13th, 2012. Laying in bed reading The Shepherd of the Hills by Harold Bell Wright, I glanced toward the window and saw snowflakes falling from the sky on Grass Valley, California, ever so gentle through the ponderosa pines beginning to leave a white dusting on the western slope of the Sierras. Mr. Wilson's farm was hidden in the woods just on the edge of town. Some of the trees appeared to be ancient. I know the foothills from Sacramento to Tahoe have stood tall, guarding over the San Francisco Bay since time began. I slept well the night before. Songs moved through my sleeping brain as I rested. The story I told at dinner the night before stirred my dreams. I dreamed of Grandpa Hillegas and thought I talked to my father. They have lived on the other side for years now. It's easier for them to travel because they don't have to deal with time and space. Spirits of my youth, fondness for someone that loved me as a child. Daddy and Grandpa never knew me as a man, only as a child and a teen. My mother, however, spent 62 years watching me learn and grow. She was 96 when she passed and spends most of her time in heaven now fishing with Dad and Grandpa on the banks of the River of Life. I see Mom sitting on her minnow bucket as Dad casts his lure one more time trying to catch Old Smokey. Mother sits with a smiling face with her blue eyes twinkling as she stares at the bobber, knowing full well Smokey will nibble any moment and her bobber will jump. Grandpa Hilly sits on an old stump with his thumbs hooked in the straps of his bibs. Uncle Jack tells another windy story about the Navy days. I watch through the window of my mind that God opens occasionally. He allows me a chance to look in on my loved ones every now and then. When the moment is right and my soul is at rest, he opens that door to eternity just far enough for me to hear, see, and smell the beauty of the world beyond. Who knows what tomorrow will bring? A path may appear that has never been thought of. 
It could be a continuation of today or a doorway into tomorrow. Soon it will be a memory. It could be mother or dad reeling in Old Smokey. The biggest bass in the river. A young boy stuck in a tree because he climbed too high and couldn't get down. His uncle Jack threw him a ski rope with a handle and the boy looped it over a big limb and Jack lowered the boy safely back to earth. No doubt another story will be told around Mr. Wilson's table tonight as the old boys gather to sing and talk of days gone by and towns forgotten, faces remembered, lovers buried in the minds of three old troubadours whose jobs are never finished. These people need a dream, a vision, a smile, a leg slap and belly laugh, a magic carpet ride, even if it's for two hours or so. That's what we do. That's why we are here. That's why you are sitting in those chairs waiting. Tomorrow, it will all be a memory, a pleasant remembrance of another space and time. The day moved slowly as the light snow fell on April 13th. A thin blanket covered the green grass and mountain flowers. I tried to nap and gave up and headed to town to have some breakfast. Monday, April 16th, 2012, Nevada City, Broad Street Cafe Patio. Three troubadours at Mr. Wilson's farm came together today. After two years, I have realized in the last few days I'm here for a job that must be carried through to the end. If it were to go unfinished, I will never know why I lived through the surgery. I would have no idea why my voice came back. My dear friends, Mo and Peter, had both stayed by my side through it all. There were times when my wife, Jane, would hold the phone to my ear to hear encouraging words or songs all I could do was cry and wonder why my freedom and dream and gift appeared to be over, finished. They kept calling every day for seven months. They sent money. They said prayers. They were on the ball with positive energy. Now the three of us have written 36 songs, and Peter has provided a way for us to spend two weeks performing and recording. The gift goes on. Not only did the gift go on, it was given on a theater stage, one of those stages that famous people perform on, 300 seats. It wasn't packed for us, but 150 believers in magic and music were there. The stories we told and the music we sang came from our hearts, not something written from a script, but from a place deep inside, a place few people can find, the place that makes us different from others the desire of a dreamer to express a feeling that to most goes untold for eternity, that place that opens wide the vulnerability of mankind's soul, the place where dreams live. Give, and ye shall receive.